22 points, 21 rebounds, and 10 assists. 34 for Jamal Murray. Game four is Friday night in Miami, 5.30 tip-off on ABC. Something is wrong with the Dodgers. They've lost four straight, and for the second night in a row, they lose to Cincinnati in the bottom of the ninth. Reds rookie right fielder Will Benson hit a two-run homer to end it, his first career home run in the major leagues. Nice way to get number one. The Dodgers are now in second place in the NL West, two games behind Arizona. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson. More news, opinions, and conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. We begin top story with late breaking news. Is it going to succeed, yes or no? I think it's going to succeed. It's going to succeed. Can you believe it? Y'all did it. KBLA Talk 1580 is about to celebrate its second anniversary on Juneteenth. And no terrible twos around here. We couldn't be more excited about all the good news we'll be announcing soon, including the launch of some new shows to keep giving you more of what you've been looking for. Come on! Smart Radio for Smart People. Hey, it's our celebration, but you get all the gifts. We'll be giving away fresh merch, swag bags, and a chance for you to join the private invitation only. Star studded music and dance till you drop food and drink galore second anniversary celebration. Woo! To stay in the know about the second anniversary details, download the KBLA Talk 1580 app right now. Don't miss out on your chance to be a winner at KBLA Talk 1580. When we come forward, we're bringing everybody with us. Happy anniversary, KBLA! To boldly go where no man has gone before. Boldly taking talk radio where it has never gone before. New vistas, new voices, new views, new visions, new victories. We're KBLA Talk 1580, and we're taking public media black. Black, black, black. One, two, three, go! Live from the Burt Park, USA. I'm Tavis Smiley, and you're listening to KBLA Talk 1580. So glad to see you and me back in stride again. Our phone number, 1-800-920-1580. 1-800-920-1580. All of our socials can be found at KBLA 1580. That's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Everything at KBLA 1580. Let me also invite you right now to download our app at KBLA 1580. Download the app. And listen to us live anywhere in the world, but only by downloading our app right now at KBLA 1580. Should you miss us any day in real time, check out the podcast of our program by going to the app, the website, Anchor, Spotify, Apple, so many places to get the podcast and listen at your leisure. Should you miss us any day in real time, but I am delighted to have you along live with us today for the next three hours. You can also watch the live stream of this program by tapping on the KBLA TV icon on our app or by going to our YouTube channel. And given who our guest is in the first hour, if you've never tapped on or tapped into our YouTube channel or watched us live on the app, uh, I highly recommend that today (laughs) you make your maiden voyage uh, with regard to uh, watching us as well as listening to us, given who we'll introduce in just a moment as our guest in the first hour today. Let me also invite you to follow me on Facebook and Instagram at The Real Tavis Smiley and get Twitter updates at Tavis Smiley. Another great show on tap for you today. We're going to try to squeeze an 80 pound show into a 45 pound bag. Uh, we'll do our best. In our second hour, can AI reporters be the solution to reviving the struggling news industry? You have no doubt heard or read. That the L.A. Times just announced it is laying off 13% of its newsroom. So, could A.I. be the answer to the prayer? Or does A.I. pose a threat to journalistic integrity 
Uh, Von Rees conducted an interesting experiment with AI reporter uh, named Wells. He named it Wells after the trailblazing journalist Ida B. Wells Barnett. And most folk could not differentiate between articles generated by Wells versus articles written by humans. Von Rees on AI generated news content joins us live in studio today in our second hour. In our third hour, two conversations. Up first, Emmy Award winning comedian, talk show host, and best selling author, Shaletta Brundage, on honoring the boss ladies in our midst. I love that. Honoring the boss ladies in our midst. And on the B side of our three, our regular contributor, Connie Rice, on the Justice Department informing former President Donald Trump yesterday that he is the target in the classified documents probe, which suggests to many legal experts that a federal indictment is on the way. We will see what Connie has to say about all of that. Mike Pence's town hall on CNN last evening and more in this ever-evolving race for the White House. And speaking of the ever-evolving race for the White House, I am pleased to have live in studio at KBLA Talk 1580 right now the recently announced People's Party presidential candidate, Dr. Cornell West, who I'm delighted to welcome to the studios of KBLA Talk 1580. My dear brother, it's a blessing to see you. Brother, you know the Lord is smiling on me, allowing me to set eyes on you this close for this long, given our <laughs> crazy lives and things, though, man. But I just want to say that uh, KBLS, the, the greatest black talk network mm. in the country, expanding, but most importantly, keeping the focus where it belongs, mm -hmm. which is on the priceless poor and the precious working class folk beginning on the chocolate side of town, but then spills over. And in that sense, both of us in our calling and in our vocation, uh, whatever faults or foibles or crack vessel qualities that every human being has, and we all have it, mm -hmm. that we try to keep the focus on something greater and grander than us. And that's what you've been able to do, though, brother. That's what you've been able to do. It was it almost, what, 35 years we first met, though, man? Yeah, it's been a while, brother. Lord, have mercy. And then with mom, you know, that you the third son of mom. I was just looking at your uh, dedication to her for the covenant with black America, the covenant in action. It just shows how blessed we are that we mm -hmm. still just here, black men in our right mind, at least most days of the week. <laughs> That's a spiritual some, some, achievement. Some days, I'm not even sure most. <laughs> that's some, a, some days of the week. <laughs> no, but that's, it, it means we're giving, we're yeah. serving, we're oh, empowering yeah. others, and that's what it is all about. I was talking to my dear brother, Mark Ridley Thomas. Mm -hmm. I love him so, respect him, him so, and he was saying how... Uh, he said, please say hello to Brother Tavis when you come through. I said, absolutely. Yeah. You have been magnificent in your defense of his integrity given this assault that's taking place. Uh, uh, but we all will continue to straighten our backs. We all will continue to move with a style, with a smile, with a humility, with an acknowledgement that even well, given whatever the circumstances, yeah. we bounce back strong and that's that's good news man yeah. we living in some dim and <laughs> some grim times we're we gonna talk about it there's a lot of that Ooh, whole lot of that as, as we say news. as we say that part that part is a whole lot of that, that part let me let, let me commence though by saying happy belated birthday Ooh, uh, we, yeah. we talked on the phone of course um yes, dr west just turned uh, uh 70 years young <laughs> on june the second <laughs> We celebrated Prince's, what would have been Prince's 65th birthday yesterday. On June the 7th. On June the 7th, man. man. Isn't that? Well, he Jehovah's Witness. He yeah, didn't, he didn't celebrate. We spent, we spent a time with him. That's right. I would sneak in and give him a hug and things. That's for your birthday. You know, Brother West, I'm not in it right now. You know, I, I said, Brother, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm Baptist. I'm, yeah. I'm gut bucket black Baptist loving you to death. I, I, got, to, I got to acknowledge your birthday, man. We, ce we celebrated his, what would have been his 65th yesterday. Oh, that's Missed beautiful. that brother deeply. That's so uh, you and I spent some good times with oh. him. Oh, and uh, we celebrate your 70th birthday on, on the 2nd of June. Uh, let, let me start with this. And I've got the whole hour, and we're going to make this hour commercial free. Mm, I want to spend cool. as much time with you. We, you, de you deserve a commercial God, free hour. Lord, Lord, so Lord. I want to just spend some time, a uh, good time in this hour talking to you. Let me start with this. Um, the audience heard me say this a couple of days ago. I was actually on the air when the announcement came forth that you were running. 
So the phone lines, the studio lit up. My personal phone started buzzing like crazy. I checked it during the commercial break, and people kept asking, is it true? Is it true? Is it true? And I said, what? Looked a little further, uh, and the announcement did come forth that you uh, were running for president. And so I went on the air you know, immediately and said, it is true. Dr. West is running. Uh, and I look forward to having him on the program in a couple of days, and here you are, as promised, uh, live in studio. But the, the first thing I thought, and I've been getting so many text messages and emails and just people reaching out to me knowing our relationship and friendship and brotherhood over these 30-some years. Yes. As you mentioned, I take great pride and humility in being regarded, uh, being regarded as your mother's third, third son. Third, third son. That, mean, that's oh, me, that means God. a lot to me. Oh, you got Irene, a smiling from the grave. Uh, Irene Looking Bias over West. over the porch of heaven. Irene Lord, Bias Lord, West. Yes, lover, indeed, lover, 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 lover. Miss her deeply. Um, but uh, the first thing... I thought, and others have echoed this in their comments to me, that this seems so off-brand for you. It seems so off-brand for Cornell West. All the years I've known you, 35 years, and those who've known you longer than I have, have always known you to be a towering public intellectual who has not held his tongue, has not held back in his critique of the American empire. So the question I think that we have to start with is how does one who has critiqued the American empire in the way you have now want to be the head of that empire? Yeah, no, that's I'm trying to square these two things. Wonderful, wonderful question to begin with, though, brother, because, you see, I begin actually with uh, my own sense of calling. Mm -hmm. You know, I am who I am because somebody loved me and cared for me. I'm the second child of Irene B. West, Clifton L. West. I'm a product of Shiloh Baptist Church. I come out of the greatest tradition of the modern world, which is a black musical tradition of the Gospels of James Cleveland and Aretha Franklin and the genius of a Stevie Wonder and a an Ashford and Simpson and Marvin Gaye. And we ain't even got to John Coltrane mm -hmm. and Ella Fitzgerald yet. Now, what is it about that tradition? Well, that comes from a people, a great people, a world historical people who have been hated probably more so than any other people for 400 years mm. and yet taught the world so much about love, I terrorized people, teach the world so much about freedom for everybody. See, we don't form left versions of the Ku Klux Klan. We produce Harriet Tubman and Martin King. Mm. We traumatized for 400 years. We produce wounded healers. We're dealing with depths of sorrow that language cannot describe, and yet we produce joy spreaders and Louis Armstrong with just one place to start. What does that mean? That means that you have to be willing to be used for something. For me, as a Christian, bigger than bigger than you. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, Bill Withers used me, but add God up in there. <laughs> God, how you going to use a crack vessel like Cornell West in his short move from womb to tomb? Mm -hmm. And I would never have conceived that moving toward the White House would do that. I've said on many occasions, you find me in a crack house before you find me in the White House. Mm -hmm. There's probably more corruption in the White House than, <laughs> than my brothers and sisters of various colors in the crack house. They're just flying high in the friendly skies in different ways. But what does that mean? It means then that if you feel called to truth and justice, you have to be willing to be in context that you hadn't planned to be in. So you and I, all these years, I ain't never talked about running for president. Mm -hmm. Running from the police, yeah. Running for president, <laughs> no. But running for truth and justice, yeah. that's what brought us together 30-something years ago. Mm -hmm. That's Martin King. That's Malcolm X. That's Ella Baker. That's Fannie Lou Hamer. That's A. Philip Randolph. That's Bobby Hutton, mm -hmm. who was shot down by the police two days after Martin King was shot down in mm -hmm. April, right? Mm -hmm. And we ain't got to Angela Davis yet. Yeah. What a people. What a great tradition. So I decided, I said, hmm, given the low level, given the overwhelming mediocrity of American politics, I want to be a jazz man in politics just like I've been a jazz man in the life of the mind. Mm -hmm. What is jazz? Three elements. Blues. What is blues? Catastrophe, lyrically expressed. Catastrophe, honestly confronted catastrophe artistically transfigured mm -hmm. a strange fruit mm -hmm. transfigure it for us billy holiday 
Nobody yeah. loves me but my mama, and she might be jiving too. It. Transform it, B.B. King. Let us confront catastrophe. Most politicians talk about little problems. Mm -hmm. See, black folk don't have problems. We have catastrophes visited on us. Mm -hmm. Indigenous people's catastrophes visited on us. Working people, catastrophes visited on us. U.S. foreign policy, bombs drop. That's not a problem. That's catastrophe. So you have to begin with the truth. And I always view the black musical tradition as setting the highest standards because they've been the freest of black people among us. Mm -hmm. They ain't laughing when it ain't funny and, and scratching when it don't itch. You got to sing from your heart and soul. Stevie Wonder say, they haven't done nothing. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Second element, swing. What is swing? A different conception of time in the present that authorizes a better future. So we never feel as if we're fatalistic. We caught. There's no way out. Mm. It looks that way through a certain lens, but we got another lens that shatters the cords, shatters the boundaries, shatters the contours. And lo and behold, we got hope because we can see a future way, way down the line that looks like it's impossible. But if you don't try to achieve the impossible, you'll never be able to achieve what might be possible, but you didn't conceive it because you're looking at the impossible, mm. you see. That's precisely what black folk mean. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God is within me and everywhere I go, I leave a little heaven behind. That's right. That heaven behind me, mm, I'm tying to something bigger than just this present situation. So, so we're just not talking about music. We're talking about ways of looking at the world through the lens of those friends were known called the wretched mm -hmm. of the, the earth. earth. The yeah. least of these in 25th chapter of Matthew. And last mm -hmm. but not least is improvisation. Flexible, fluid. You can't be dogmatic. You can't be ossified and petrified. Mm -hmm. You got to be willing to learn and listen. Well, American politics refuses catastrophe. Look at New York right now ecological catastrophe. Have we hit that head on? No. Mm -hmm. White supremacy, major catastrophe, slavery, Jim Crow, Jane Crow, mass incarceration, schools that are decrepit, indecent housing, not enough jobs with a living wage. That's not problems. Those are catastrophes visited on precious folk. Same would be true in terms of domestic violence for women. We can go on and on and this vicious attack, attacks on our precious trans folk. Mm -hmm. They made an image of God just like me and you. Gay brothers and lesbian sisters and so forth. You see, oppressed folk around the world. That is the greatest tradition of the modern world. And let us never forget the struggle for black freedom in the American empire has always been the democratic leaven in the American loaf. So that for me, to run for the head of the empire I'm taking that tradition with me, mm -hmm. then I'm going to dismantle that empire in the name of those who I don't call everyday people. But critiquing and pushing that empire from the outside is fundamentally different than critiquing that empire on the inside. I was literally up all night last night thinking about you and preparing for this conversation. And I'm thinking of simple things. And these are simple, as I admit, but you'll take my point. Yes. I can't see Cornel West as president wearing no American flag on his lapel. No, You've never no, done that. No, 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 I don't. But, but, no, no, but no. when you don't do that, they're going to come after you oh, for they, not being patriotic. Let them come at me. I can't, I can't, I can't, I'm I can't imagine. I'm a black man. I ain't going to be wearing no flags and things. I can't, ima oh, I can't no. imagine Cornell West giving his critique of the military industrial complex being the commander in chief. No, brother, when you had that massive transfer of funds from the military industrial complex to, to eliminating poverty, mm -hmm. eliminating houselessness and homelessness, ensuring that every citizen has access to a decent house, quality education. That is part of the massive redistribution of wealth from the top to everyday people. There's been a massive redistribution of wealth from poor and working people to the well-to-do. Mm -hmm. America has nothing against redistribution, only when it goes down to mm -hmm. it. Does America mm -hmm. have a problem of it? So in that sense, you're right. The same prophetic fire, the same commitment to everyday people, the same commitment to poor and working people will have to be manifest now within the halls of power. Mm -hmm. Now that's difficult. Most folk get in the halls of power. Mm -hmm. Ooh, what is it? What is our great anthem? Lift every voice of the city. You get 
you fall in love with the wine of the world, mm -hmm. intoxicated with drunk, the felicity. Drunk with it, yeah. Drunk with yeah, it, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's a challenge, but that's a spiritual question. Yeah. That's a spiritual question. You see, when the jazz musicians shifted from the Apollo to Carnegie Hall, they still played the same thing. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Same thing. James, are you still going to play Get Up Off That Thing in Carnegie Hall? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the payback, yes, I am. How come, James? I come from a great tradition, and we keep it funky. Speaking of funky, um, if 9-11, I'm, I'm, I'm staying with this military-industrial complex. Absolutely. 9-11 happens on your watch. Given who you are as a Christian, I want to come to that in a second. Lewis Baldwin was on this program not long ago. Oh, I want to, Martin Luther King Jr. Yes, yes man. Uh, Vanderbilt, Lewis Baldwin. Yes. I want to raise an issue with you about an issue with you that he raised in our conversation. But um, given who you are as a Christian, given who you are as a follower of Dr. King. Yes. 9-11 um, happens on your watch. What do you do? Well, the thing is, first you have to comfort those who are suffering. That's always mm -hmm. the first thing. That's true in any situation. It could be in ghettos and hoods and barrios. It, it could be in the West Bank under Israeli occupation that's been vicious. It could be in, in Ukraine right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, it could be those suffering in Russia. I don't allow flags to get in the way of the rich humanity of people. And therefore, first, same when it hits America, you're in, in solidarity with the suffering, right? Mm -hmm. Then you come up with a response that does not reinforce the violence and the terror. Look at what happened in Afghanistan for 20 years, the longest war. United States has ever fought. Mm -hmm. And then after 20 years, freeze $7 billion and 20 million of the 40 million precious brothers and sisters in Afghanistan are near starvation and they can't get food. That's the kind of thing you avoid. Sure. That's the kind of thing you avoid. So you proceed in such a way that you confront the catastrophe. Mm -hmm. You are sensitive and highly compassionate to those who have been victimized. But improvisation, and improvisation is a species of practical wisdom. It's not just a technical skill in music. You have to be able to make practical judgments to make sure you are not contributing more hatred, violence, tear in the world, even though you've been terrorized. But that, that's a, that's a, it's, a, it's a brilliant response, but it's philosophical. Yes. What, the, what the American people are going to want if they drop a bomb on us is revenge. No, and, no I'm, I'm not a revenge-driven president. So what, do you, so what do you do? I'm going to educate the American people mm -hmm. and tell them that revenge is not the proper response. That's the response of empires who want to be great like Alexander the Great. Mm -hmm. I like to be great like Jesus. I like to be great like Fanny Lou Hamer. And somewhere I read, he or she is greatest among you will be your servant. Yeah. So you're going to have a very different... See, part of it is you can't just... You can't accommodate yourself to what has been in place. You see what I mean? Thank God that Ron Carter and Mary Lou Williams didn't accommodate themselves to the music in place. Mm -hmm. They had to create their own sound. So it is with politicians. So it is with intellectuals. We can't go into Harvard and Yale and just reproduce the same conceptual schemes. We got something new to give to the world. Mm -hmm. And what we have new in the realm of politics, it really hasn't been manifest because too many of our black politicians, there's a few of them out there who cut against the grain, but too many of them to readily conform and become complacent to what's in place. You have to educate people. You have to exemplify a certain level of commitment to truth and justice that they're not used to mm. because there's so few politicians who actually exemplify what I'm talking about. Speaking of truth and justice, and you mentioned Jesus a moment ago, let me come to that. And by the way, for those who want to learn more about his campaign, I'll mention this a few times during this hour. It's CornellWest24.com. All the details about the campaign, his presidential campaign, if you want to support it uh, and learn more about it, CornellWest24.com is the, the place 
to get all that information. Um, you mentioned Jesus a moment ago, and it didn't take long for you to do it. That's just who you are. It's fundamentally part of who you are. That's shallow, who, who I am. That's, that's, that's the, vacation I, that's, Bible that's, school. That's shallow Baptist brother. church of you, man. It, that's it. Reverend Willie P. Cook. Reverend Willie yeah, P. Yeah, I know, I know the story, brother. He stayed out of Jim Crow, Mississippi <laughs> with all of his theological genius. Yeah. I always try to catch up and be like him. So the great the great Lewis Baldwin, brilliant professor, yes, uh, king is. scholar, yes, now is. retired, Vanderbilt. Is he retired now? He's retired now. Mm -hmm. uh, he's That's an early retirement. He's, he's still there doing his thing. Uh, okay. He's still there, though. No, he... um, so Lewis Baldwin said to me in one of our conversations, watch this now, that he did not believe that a true Christian could be president of these United States. He didn't believe that a true Christian could be president of these United States. He said, Tabas, let's just start with the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill. <laughs> Thou shalt not. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you know real. them well. That's real. Um, That's so real. Baldwin says, I'm not sure I believe that. You lead with your Christian ethos. Talk to me about, you're a philosopher. Talk to me about uh, Baldwin's belief that a true Christian can't be president of this country. Well, I mean, what one could argue that a true Christian can hardly exist in a world of such overwhelming hatred and greed mm -hmm. and manipulation and domination. You have to be so much in the world but not of it. You have to be so much against the grain that when we say true Christian, you say, ooh, mm -hmm. who do we know? I mean, I, I view Christians in part just trying to love their crooked neighbors with their crooked hearts and recognize they need a grace that sustains them in order to do that so that they don't fall under the spell of forms of idolatry. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so that all of us are, are tempted to forms of idolatry, whether we're in the White House, Crack House, Mama's House, the House of Prayer, or the House of Yes. I was in the House of Yes, you know, I got a house album coming out called mm -hmm. House of West, mm -hmm. and it's the biggest queer space in Brooklyn. And I, right there, you say, hey, yes, we're gonna keep this love going, we're gonna keep this compassion going. True Christian? Oh, boy, that's that's heavy language. Mm -hmm. That's heavy language. But it doesn't mean you give up on the standard. Mm -hmm. That's the thing about it. Now, when you look at, the, 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 look at Jesus, now Jesus goes into the temple. The temple was the largest edifice on the other side of Rome. There's 400 Roman troops. He's got a ragtag group. He goes in to do what? Run out the money changers because of his love for poor people. He's not hating rich people. He's hating greed, organized greed. He's hating institutionalized indifference. He's hating routinized hatred mm -hmm. and he ends up on a cross so then the question becomes well it's certainly true you cannot be a follower of jesus and be on Pontius pilot's payroll mm -hmm. and not say a, a word about poor people that's true mm -hmm. now if you're following jesus and end up in Pontius pilot's office you better have some spiritual mm -hmm. Armor. We back to Ephesians 6. You better put on the whole armor for that. But that's true for our jobs. Mm -hmm. That's true for our communities. Similar temptations. But my brother Baldwin has a strong, strong uh, um, point in that regard. And that's why I would have to be equipped uh, uh, spiritually and morally not to fall prey to the intoxications of power power corrupts absolute power corrupts absolutely speaking of power when on the campaign trail um and it ain't gonna take long you know how this process works oh, you, yeah. you're not naive about this That's right. you never run but you know how this process works it ain't gonna take long for the media to start uh, and others uh, to start suggesting that he ain't got no foreign policy experience and I'll, i always hate that critique of black folk as if we don't have anything to say, uh, we have no no way of uh, uh, no world view, uh, no way of understanding what's happening around the globe. Um, so that black people just automatically get pushed to the edges. I, I fight hard at this station when I'm talking about foreign affairs to find black folk who are qualified mm, to talk about beautiful. foreign affairs. That's and right. Colin Powell wasn't the only one. God that's rest his soul. That's right. But right. they're going to start saying pretty quickly here that Cornell West ain't got no business being president, no business being commander in chief. The brother has no foreign policy experience. How would you respond to that? Well, it looks like uh, our dear gangster brother Donald Trump, he would have a whole lot of experience <laughs> in foreign policy, I guess. I mean, <laughs> good God almighty. 
Uh, uh, and that's not an excuse, though. You do have to do your homework. Mm -hmm. But one thing is you both do your homework, and you also have people around you who have done significant amounts of homework. But the homework is not done in the abstract. Mm -hmm. You see, if you're doing your homework from the vantage point of the stock market and the Pentagon and Wall Street, that's different than doing your homework from the vantage point of everyday people here and abroad. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Look at the Ukraine, for example, right? The way it's portrayed, you got precious Ukrainian brothers and sisters who are being treated viciously, experiencing overwhelming suffering. That is very true, and we begin there. There's no doubt about that, mm -hmm. very much so. You've got a wounded Russian empire that is trying to take over territory that it once had. Mm -hmm. just, you put it in context. Then you've got NATO. Now, NATO promised Gorbachev a few decades ago they would not proceed one inch. That was part of the agreement when the Soviet Union went down. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, 14 former Soviet countries, satellite territories, mm -hmm. now part of NATO. So that you can imagine, empires act like empires. When they feel as if people are encroaching on them and pushing them against the wall, they respond usually violently. It would be mm -hmm. like if we had missiles in Mexico or Canada, or Venezuela, or Cuba, what would the United States do? Blow them to smithereens, mm -hmm. which would still be wrong. Yeah. But that's how empires behave. So you have to put that in the context and say, okay, I'm in solidarity with the suffering of precious Ukrainians. Absolutely. You've got a proxy war between two empires. Mm -hmm. the most powerful empire in the world, the United States. Wounded empire with shrinking economy, shrinking mm -hmm. land. The Russian empire. And where are we headed? The nuclear war, if we don't cease the war and come up with some negotiations and diplomatic ways of proceeding. That, to me, is much more wiser than the kind of revenge-driven foreign policy where you end up mm -hmm. with not just more wars. You end up with a permanent war economy where 57 cents for every dollar goes to the military, which means we don't have enough money for food. Healthcare, mm -hmm. quality education. Look, look, look at the debt ceiling agreement. What did yeah. they do? They cut food stamps for mm -hmm. the poor, but allowed for the expansion of the military. The warped priorities, Brother Martin talked about when he came out against the war in that, Vietnam and said those bombs that drop abroad fall in ghettos, barrios, barrios, yeah. and that's true with our white brothers and sisters living in poverty, and it's certainly true for our indigenous brothers and sisters living in poverty. Yeah. But of course, you and I, we begin on the chocolate side of town. We have to make yeah. no apology for that, but we are universalists. We embrace the suffering of everybody. You mentioned two things I want to come to you right quick, just watching my time. It's getting away sure. from me, too. Yeah, um, yeah. You mentioned NATO. You've had a strong critique, and that's putting it mildly, a strong yes. critique of NATO. And as head of the American empire, you'd be a part of NATO. No, it, it, it would be fundamentally transformed. It would not look like what it like looks like before. I'm with the Angela Davises and others when they talk about abolition. right? Mm -hmm. I don't want uh, versions of poverty that are liberal and neoliberal so that some get something and others. No, I want the abolition of poverty. Mm -hmm. I want the abolition of mass incarceration, which is a crime against humanity. That does not mean that people who commit murders and so forth would not have places to go. All they got to do is look at Denmark, look at Vinland. They still have rehabilitation places, but they're not places of solidary confinement. They're not places in solidary confinement is a form of torture. Mm -hmm. I want abolition. So it would be true. I don't want NATO in its present form. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Other ways of coming up with public safety and protection can be conceived. That's what it means to look at the world through a different set of lens. Mm -hmm. how, how, I'm, I'm thinking now of... Um we were talking about a moment ago about foreign policy experience. The truth is Barack Obama didn't have no foreign policy well, experience true, when he became president and he went on to serve, you know, for eight years. Um, I, I raise him because I'm thinking now of, of his comment. <laughs> you may recall years ago, somebody, he, somebody <laughs> asked him about Mitch McConnell and he said, would you want to have lunch with Mitch McConnell? Would, <laughs> would you want to go play golf with Mitch McConnell? Uh, he, he had, he, he had no interest in hanging out with Mitch McConnell and the critique of Obama during that era, as you recall, that he wouldn't play nice, nice. He wouldn't do the circuit. He wouldn't wouldn't invite the Republicans over for coffee and tea and spend time trying to get to understand them and to negotiate and get get more policy, uh, good public policy passed. That's Obama. Yeah. I'm talking now to Cornell Ronald West. 
uh, and um, I'm trying to trying to trying to imagine how you would negotiate and deal with these rabid folk on the right. Yeah, but I've if been you were president, that. I've been doing it all my life, man. Yeah. Harvard, Yale, Princeton provides many occasion and opportunity <laughs> to deal with some right wing, <laughs> right wing, deeply conservative folk. Now, of course, my dear brother Robbie George, you know, sure, black brother sure, who sure, traveled sure. around the country, he, he, he's got his own integrity, and that, that that's very, very strong. And at the same time, we clash on fundamental issues. So, in that sense, again, like a jazz man or woman, you're flexible. Mm -hmm. You move from one context to the next. Moving in whatever context, preserve your integrity, just like you're moving in any house and preserve your integrity. I told my beloved wife, Anna Hita, she said, but, but, but honey, what's going to happen when you win? Are you going to move into the White House? I said, I don't even want to move into the White House until every fellow citizen has a house. Mm -hmm. That's the spirit. So where are you going to live? That's the spirit. Where are you going to live, Doc? The Lord take care of me. Because it ain't about living in the house. Mm -hmm. That house was built by enslaved Africans. It's a matter of witness and bearing witness. If they say, well, the only place you could stay is in the White House because that's the only place you can procure your security, mm -hmm. then that's different because it's not just me. Mm -hmm. That has to do with my loved ones and mm -hmm. things. You see what I mean? But it's the spirit of mm -hmm. it. That's the important thing. You can put a tuxedo on Curtis Mayfield in the Lyric Theater in Chicago and he gonna be as soulful and magnificent there as he was in Mike's basement after dark on the south side of Chicago. That's the genius of Curtis. That sets the standard. That's how we ought to proceed, not just as those in politics. Mm -hmm. You do the same thing in, 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 in communications, man, yeah. with all of the temptations of trying not to speak the truth, trying not to lay bare the plight of the poor and working people, no. KBLA 1580 says, we're going to put a smile on Ida B. Wells' face. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a different level. I know my dear brother Roland yeah. It's crazy about Ida. Rightly so. Sister Hannah, too. Rightly so. That's the standard. Yeah, That's the standard. Let me talk about, um, as a matter of fact, this came up in one of our conversations with a guest earlier this week. Um, one of the great joys of my life, the great honors of my life was, uh, uh, was having the opportunity to, to co-author with you oh, yes. that New York Times best-selling text, The Rich and the, the Rest of Us, and the rest A of Poverty us. Manifesto, one of the great joys of my life. 24 oh, books, oh. but I've only written one with Cornel West. We had a great time. And we had a great time putting that book Sister together. Cheryl, Sister yeah, Cheryl. Oh, yeah, Cheryl. I ran Woodruff. into her the other day in front of the uh, oh, Blue you? Note. Oh, wow. Yes. Cheryl Woodruff was our, was our, our editor on, that, on right. that text. That's right. Um, well, and so I want to come to that because I, I am curious in this moment as president, it's one thing for you and me to be on a poverty tour around the country, another thing to write a text, another thing for you to do all the, to engage all the work and witness you've engaged on poverty, income inequality, economic immobility, but you've done it from the outside. As president, how would you address the issue of poverty, income inequality, and economic immobility? Well, one, I would lay bare what my priorities are, are. I would constitute a team that says we're going to use all of our creativity, fortitude, and courage to educate the country and say that our fate is inextricably bound to our precious poor and priceless working class folk, no matter mm -hmm. what color gender. And that using that bully pulpit, I would try to reshape the framework that we understand what it means to be American. I want to reintroduce America to the best of itself. Mm -hmm. And the best of America has been the black freedom movement and the black musical tradition. There's other great traditions, but nothing like the black freedom movement. So that to use that tradition to spill over now into the White House. Now, we know our dear you know, brother Barack Obama, he's part of the black tradition, too. Mm -hmm. And I respect that. That's why I supported him twice. But when it came to Wall Street, he backed down. When it came to dropping drones on innocent folk, he backed down. You've got to be strong enough to attempt to push it through. Now, you may not be able to pull it off. But you're not punting on the second down. Mm. You see, you're going to fight all the way through. Now, we also know, given the great tradition of black people, that every, every person, you know this just as well as I do, who has a deep love for black people and a love for poor and working people, you better get ready to be crucified. Because mm. you're not in this for the short term. 
You in this to bear witness to something bigger than you to put a smile on your great grandmama's face who sacrificed in ways we don't have a language for. So that you, and the same is true, you're loving black people, not to get them to love you back. It's not a transitional quid pro quo thing. You're loving black folk, poor people, because they're worthy of it. They may not understand what you're doing. They may misconstrue what you're doing. You keep doing it any way. Why? Because you think it's right and immoral. That's what it is to be a prophetic figure who spills over into the political life. Yeah. His website is CornellWest24.com to learn more about the campaign and support the campaign if you are so inclined. It's CornellWest24.com. And in case you've just tuned in, Cornell West, presidential candidate, Cornell West. Uh, I, I'm still getting used to saying that. <laughs> is, is, our, is our guest uh, in, in this hour. Um, let me ask you, uh, there are those who've suggested that this is some sort of vanity campaign for you. Uh, you mentioned earlier you have a CD coming out. You've done a couple of those in your career. Um, to those who say this is a vanity campaign, uh, or it's all about vanity for that matter, you respond to that how? Well, first, you begin with all the death threats and things. If that's the way you want to obtain your vanity, to put yourself in danger like that, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. But you also have to look at somebody's life, you see. Is this consistent with what I have been doing for 55 years when I grew up on the chocolate side of Sacramento and Glen Elder, when we shut the city down to have black studies when, when Brother Martin Luther King Jr. was killed. Is this consistent with working with the Black Panther Party and running the, or being a part of the breakfast program and the prison program? Is this consistent with what we did, not just during Obama years, putting the stress on poor people, putting the stress on a foreign policy that would treat other nations with dignity in Africa and Asia. Is this consistent with wrestling with what happened at Harvard over and over again, standing with Palestinian brothers and sisters, not because I'm anti-Jewish, but because if there was a Palestinian occupation of precious Jewish brothers and sisters, I would be in solidarity with them in the same way I'm in solidarity with an Israeli occupation of Palestinian brothers and sisters. It's a moral issue. It's a spiritual issue. And after all of that, if all they can see is vanity, mm -hmm. I say, well, uh, I got to learn, but I'm praying for you, but you did wrong this is the last thing i need to be doing when i turn 70 <laughs> believe me you speaking speaking of israel and palestine i'm glad you went there it's on my list of things i wanted to, in the back of my mind at least uh that i wanted to talk to uh you about uh that if ever there were a vexing issue for president after president after president it is the middle east That's it true. is this uh this israel palestine uh tete-a-tete -tete. Um, as president, uh, I, I know your critique well. The audience just heard some of it if they've never heard it before. Um, I, I, I can only imagine uh, that the Jewish community would have some serious questions about a Cornell West candidacy, given candidacy, that is, given some of your comments in the past. But as president, how would you navigate that conundrum? Well, it would be very similar to responding to any plight of oppressed people. I'm mm -hmm. concerned about Muslims in China. I'm concerned about poor peoples in South Africa, even though they got a black government, mm -hmm. got a black middle class government that's not addressing the needs of the black poor. Same would be true in other parts of the world, Dalits in, in India, Roma in Europe. Right now, my gay and lesbian and trans precious folk in Uganda, it's a moral and spiritual issue. Mm -hmm. And so it is with the Palestinians and the Israelis. What makes it difficult, of course, is that our precious Jewish brothers and sisters have been just so hated and terrorized for 2,000 years that they've always viewed themselves as underdogs, and rightly so. They've been so thoroughly mistreated, chronically so. And so after that indescribable uh, Holocaust and concentration camps, they were looking for places to go. They jumped out of the burning buildings of Europe and landed in the Middle East, but other people were also there. 
and yet they had to choose. And the, com and the Jewish community is never homogeneous. They always have a variety of different mm -hmm. perspectives. Albert Einstein wanted cooperation in a binational state. He wanted how do you coexist? Jabotinsky wanted domination. We must subjugate them, dominate them, engaging ethnic cleansing. Jabotinsky versus Einstein, very different. Both from Jewish to the core, just like today, Noam Chomsky and deep solidarity pal Palestinians based on his Jewish sensibilities, and then you got deeply conservative Jews. Mm -hmm. So the, the crucial question becomes, again, the moral and the spiritual one. What does it mean to keep the track, keep track of the least of these? And when you, I mean, my God, you know, when you look at the, uh, the occupation in West Bank and, and Gaza and so forth, and the killing of innocent Palestinians day in and day out, just a few years ago, 551 Palestinian babies killed in 51 days, and not one American politician could say a mumbling word. That's morally disgraceful. You can't say never again, and then at the same time, allow for the killing of innocent folk and not say a mumbling word. You have to be never again across the board. Can, can, can the Jewish lobby handle that kind of truth? No, Jewish lobby can't do it, but other Jewish brothers and sisters can, and especially mm -hmm. the younger generation of Jewish brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. You see, I am deeply committed to Jewish security because mm -hmm. given that history, we can't allow for any Jewish massacre, sure. a Jew, a massacre of our Jewish brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. No way. But at the same time, I'm committed to Palestinian dignity and justice. We can't allow this occupation and domination to go on. It's just a moral and spiritual issue. And so the question becomes, how do you deal with that tension? If it looks like it's a contradiction that cannot be overcome, then you got to find a way out. Oh, black folk are used to that. Mm -hmm. We have been a people who had no way out, mm -hmm. and look what we did. Yeah. We reshaped the whole culture of the globe, musically, ac acoustically, stylistically, but we haven't been able to do that politically and economically. Speaking of black people and their politics, um, if there's one person in this country right now uh, beyond Donald Trump, who I think Negroes have had enough of, is Ron DeSantis, yeah, uh, the governor of Florida. Yeah, um, when true. you made your announcement, you were running. People started emailing me and texting me saying, "But Dr. West is a is a supporter of Ron DeSantis." Oh Lord! I said, "Where did you get that?" <laughs> so. Lord. People are talking trash already. They did not read your op-ed in the Wall Street Journal, but there are people who are suggesting that you wrote something somewhere, again, not knowing the source, not having read what you said, that you are sympathetic to Ron DeSantis. So let me just give you a, the microphone now to set the record straight on what you did and did not say, how you do and don't feel about Ron DeSantis. Well, one is I'm a free black man who speak my mind, and when I agree or disagree with someone, I say it clearly. I say it can and there's no doubt that I've been committed to a test based on classical education. By classical education, I mean it goes from Socrates to Tony Morrison. Mm -hmm. It goes from Dante to James Baldwin. I want the highest intellectual standards available to our young people of all colors. Now, what DeSantis was able to do was, for the first time, the institute that classical exam from Socrates to Tony Morrison. Mm -hmm. I agreed with that. Okay. So 2% of the time, I agree with DeSantis. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Same would be true with Clarence Thomas. Yeah. Clarence Thomas is a beautiful black man aesthetically. He reminds me of my grandfather. Mm -hmm. I'll defend his beauty looks when it comes to content, policy. I agree with him 2% of the time. Like a broken clock, huh? Uh, well, no, a clock got more time sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> clock at least got two. Yeah, at least got, got two. Like, like twice a day. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. But you have to be honest and candid with folk. You can't right. be afraid to get, when, once you get locked into your silo, though, brother, mm -hmm. it violates the anthem of black people. Because mm. the anthem is not lift every echo, it's lift every voice. Mm -hmm. Thank God that Bootsy is not an echo, mm. he's a voice. He transformed himself internally to become one of the great funk masters of the modern world. If he kept imitating Dyke and the Blazers out of Buffalo, mm -hmm. he would never have been the Bootsy that we've come to love and know. You got to find your voice. Here again, we learn from Monk. Mm -hmm. We learn from the divine Sarah Vaughn. Not just entertainers, 
they are exemplars of a way of being in the world, seeing and feeling and hearing and courageously acting. And I tell you this, now that the whole world got the blues, now that the whole empire got the blues, we either learn something from a blues people mm. or we lose everything. Speaking of those blues people, um, how are you going to respond to uh, the critique that is sure, sure to come? Uh, even from some of those blues people. Oh, Lord. Some yeah. black folk. Oh, black folk come at that, you all the time. Yeah, huh? man. Don't I know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got to love them, but you yeah. put it in context. You put it in context. We man. talked about that before. Protect them, respect them, but also correct them. That's it. Respect, protect, correct. That's, that's it. That's, that's, that's our it. thing, but we are simpatico in that. <laughs> uh, but there are going to be some black folk, I've heard them already, who are suggesting that you are damaging Joe Biden's effort to be reelected. Uh, you supported Ralph Nader back in the day when he ran for president, and we all recall what happened to him. Are you prepared for the Naderization? You're gonna get you're gonna get Naderized um, for being in this race and pulling votes away from Joe Biden. What's your response? Then you see, when somebody chooses to vote for you, he's not pulling votes away. You see, Biden doesn't own any votes. Mm -hmm. He's got to earn it. Mm -hmm. He's got to earn it. If the Democrats are putting out mediocre, milk toast, neoliberal politicians who can't say a mumbling word about militarism, can't say a mumbling word about serious response to poverty, can't say a mumbling word about serious white supremacist practices. I mean, Biden himself said, America's not a racist society. Mm -hmm. I said, get off the crack pipe. <laughs> Here come Kamala Harris. What did she say? Same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Here come Clyburn. What did he say? Same well, there thing. might be some racist mm -hmm. patches in the country. Tell the truth, y'all. Mm -hmm. Then he get in front of Howard and say what? The biggest threat of America's white supremacist threat. Oh, so you changed your mind, huh? In front of black folk. Tell the truth wherever you are. If they produce a candidate that spoke to the needs of precious poor and working class folk, they wouldn't have me. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have to deal with that. Mm -hmm. They got a corporate wing in the Democratic Party that does not treat the progressive wing right. It's shown over and over again. You know, I supported Bernie twice. Mm -hmm. I supported Biden the last time. Mm -hmm. I did because I thought the Trump's fascism was such that we had to fight. Right. Does that mean then we're choosing between a neo-fascist catastrophe and a neoliberal disaster that every Democratic president can say, I'm not the almighty, but I am the alternative. You all have no other choice to vote for me. And then when he gets in there, he wouldn't be in there if it wasn't for black folks, especially black women. Yeah. To, 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 to your point that if they came correct, they wouldn't need a Cor Cornell West candidacy. Uh, tell me about the People's Party. Uh, there are a lot of people asking questions. They know you, but don't know this party uh, uh, that you uh, uh, will be the nominee for um, in the in the not too distant future. So tell me about the People's Party. Who, who started it? Who's behind it? Who runs it? Tell me about it. Yeah, but it, it started as a break off from uh, Brother Bernie Sanders' campaign mm -hmm. of 2016, Brother Nick Brown, and a number of others. We all came together. My dear sister, Nita Turner, and Myself and others were there at the founding convention looking again for a way out because the two-party system mm -hmm. has become an impediment for the empowerment of poor and working people. And so even the black folk who often feel that's the only alternative because the other one is worse. It's the lesser evil mm -hmm. argument, and it's, it's plausible, but it's not always persuasive because what happens is you get taken for granted. You get taken. Black folk push Biden over the line, and yet when we ask him to support vote, support voting rights for black people and try to do away with the filibuster, you and Charles Blow and the others, what did he say? Not a mumbling word. You say, well, Brother Joe, this is a key sweat moment. Something, something just ain't right. <laughs> Come on, brother. And that's, that's not just that. Yeah. We still got 33% of our precious children in poverty. Mm -hmm. One out of five across the board. Where is the attack on poverty? We got trillions of dollars for war and can't deal with the poverty of precious children? Mm -hmm. That's morally sick to me. You mentioned corporate America a moment ago. I've heard you say many, many times um, on the stump, uh, your stump as it were, 
uh, and all the tours that we've done together. Oh yeah, uh, I know these Cornell Westie and phrases, <laughs> uh, and, and they're all they're all right. They're on point. Uh, that Washington is bought and bossed by big money and big business. That's Cornell West to the core. That Washington is bought and bossed by big money and big business. What say you about the corporate influence on the politics of running for president? Well, one, I mean, you know, the power of. Uh corporations, the power of Wall Street, Pentagon, Silicon Valley, big tech is mighty. And they bought off so many of the politicians. So much of what goes on in Congress is legalized bribery and normalized corruption. We know that's why many people just completely pull back. Mm-hmm. I was glad to see your brother Lupe Fiasco come oh, forward yeah. in that past day. <laughs> I saw One of the yeah. great artists. Yeah. John, he said, I've never voted, but I'll vote this time. This is going to be my last mm-hmm. vote, too. <laughs> I mean, when I was with Bill Bradley, the Bill Russell said the same thing. I don't go with this stuff. I know how corrupt these folk are. It's understandable. Mm-hmm. It really is. But you got to bear witness, man. You can't be surprised by any evil. You can't be paralyzed by any despair. And so even in the face of that kind of corruption, first you got to call it for what it is. You can't act as if it doesn't exist. You can't be in denial. We got so many, so many black elites at the top. Once things start going good for them, they're not tied to what's happening in the mass incarceration regime. They're not tied to what's happening in the hood. They're not tied to the gun violence and the drugs and so forth. They so far removed, you see, that all of a sudden now it's just a matter of narrow financial success. And they forgot what they were taught when they were young, which was spiritually and moral greatness is always grander than just financial success. I got three minutes left here. I've enjoyed yeah. this hour immensely. Three minutes left. Let me cover a few more things right quick here. Um, what has been your take? Uh, uh, I saw a brilliant piece, I thought, today written about you in USA Today. Oh, young this brother. Morning. Yes, yeah. he did. Uh, he did a good job. He did a good job covering covering your announcement and uh, and your your views that others will hear in this campaign. So I, I appreciate the USA Today piece today. Uh, but broadly speaking, what's your, what's your take on the response so far to your announcement? Well, it's been surprising. I mean, I didn't, I didn't think that there would be this thing. I mean, and any time you're bearing witness, though, brother, you know, you put it in the hands of the Lord, see how it's going to do, how it's going to unfold. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we got, what, 18 million, over 18 million response just to the video. I mean, mm-hmm. good God almighty. Uh, they got folk now, even in the mainstream media, thinking about, well, Jesus Christ, above Brother West might determine the election. How am I going to determine the election? But People's Party just put in place six years ago. I just make a decision. Now, I know the, tra- the tradition of black folk is tremendous, right? <laughs> but, no, but, 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 but but if it catches fire, man, but, that, we but, discussed but, but, that earlier. And, and I do believe yeah. I'm running to win now. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't no, I'm coming out of the blocks to you, win. You, you going to the end? You, 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 oh, you going to stay into the end? man witness till the end. There ain't no mm-hmm. doubt about that. Mm-hmm. But I also have to be, you know, self-critical. I got to learn. I got to listen. I can't be a jazz man, though, man, not cultivate what Ella Baker called receptivity. Yeah. You got to be able to take it in, to grow and mature, listen to you, listen to other voices. I listen to conservative voices, mm-hmm. centrist vo- voices, but, I, I, but I'm always fortified against those who are trying to crush, not me, but crush the vulnerable and render their suffering invisible. Mm-hmm. See, that's where my righteous indignation really takes off but we always want to stand with grace and dignity with courage and compassion with malice toward none but with a righteous indignation against any form of injustice with style and a smile because you always got a spiritual and an artistic dimension to it though brother you got to have fun you got to have joy oh yeah while you're getting ready to get Lied on. Yeah. <laughs> well, you going to do that. You're you going to have some fun. Oh, oh I'm going to have some fun. That's part of who you are. That's the truth. I've got 45 seconds left. Show uh, enough. Show uh, enough. Beyond the obvious, winning the presidential election, what would you consider a successful presidential bid? Well, you know, I don't look at the world in terms of success, though. I'm not mm. called to be successful. You know, it's I'm about greatness for you. Witness. That's yeah, right. I, got I can keep alive the great tradition of the grand people who produce me. If I can put a face on Irene B. West's face, smile a on smile face. on yeah. her face, mm-hmm. that for me is greatness. So I don't measure what I'm doing simply by the success 
of the world. I really don't. I'm in it, but not of the world. I take that very, very seriously, and I think that's been one of the great gifts of black freedom fighters for 400 years. As I said earlier, I got to get used to saying it. Uh, presidential candidate, uh, Dr. Cornell West, <laughs> uh, has been our guest in this hour. I've enjoyed this immensely. I hope you have as well and learned a great deal more about him, about why he's running. Of course, there'll be a thousand interviews he'll do, uh, millions perhaps. We start, right starting right here. He's starting at KBLA, oh, and I appreciate yeah. it. Uh, his website, once again, is CornellWest24.com. CornellWest24.com to learn more about him. Uh, his campaign, and how you can support it, cornellwest24.com. Doc, I love you, man. Love you, though, brother. I appreciate Lord, you, Lord, and I tell you, I'm starting on such a high note. Well, good good, yes, good like luck. Louis Armstrong's <laughs> high C. I hope it's not too far decline after this with these quality dialogues. But, no, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going to be swinging. It ain't, yeah. don't mean a thing. If it ain't if got, it that, ain't swing. got that swing. Do wop, do wop, do wop, do wop. I'm telling you. Hour two of Tavis Smiley after news and traffic and sports on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA 1580 Santa Monica. I'm Mike Moore. Here's the latest from the 